All right, guys, I am back with the Champion 9000 watt dual fuel. And the way that this generator works here is you have the option of propane, which is this little 40, uh, 40 pound Worthington tank here, the aluminum tank I use. This one here, or you have gasoline. So I have gasoline over here and stay bill. Now, about 90% of the people that's going to buy one of these generators are going to put gas in it when they get it. The thing they're not going to put in it is stay bill. Now, the other 10% that buy a generator, they're going to be running it, and they're going to run it pretty consistent, so they don't need to put stay bill in it. But from the first time you fire this generator up and fill its tank, the first thing you need to do is go ahead and treat it with stay bill, which I'll cut, I will cut the video to do and gasoline now i use 91 octane and stay bill when i first set a generator up because i might not use it for again i might not burn that tank of fuel for a while and that's not a good thing to do is just fill it full of a tank of fuel and then test it out and say it works great and then go park it and let it sit that doesn't help you so you want to make sure you protect your gasoline in it here's the items that come with it here's the big dual outlet uh power power plug that comes with it and it's got outlets on both sides and i believe that the way that it's designed is they're all 120 volt now i bring with me a multimeter of course there's the oil that came with it i have a pair of pump pliers to be able to put on the propane line there and with this little unit you have the little charger and i'll show you how that goes in so what you have here is you have a startup instructions that'll come with your generator. It's a little weatherproof paper and tag. However, it gives you the details on what the generator can run. And if you look over here on one side of the generator near the engine, uh, which is a 439 cc engine, pretty good size single cylinder, uh, it also has all that same information right over here. They only have it in French and English, and that's what you have to work with. So. This over here, this air cleaner, unlike most brands, this air cleaner is metal. It's not plastic. And that's actually a, a very good upgrade if you consider most of them are plastic and any heat near them, they'll warp all out and they won't seal correct. And this one here is metal. So let's see, take that so you'll hear it. Not plastic. And the process for starting these is generally you can take the choke and you can move it to the halfway point and these engines will start really easy if they're if it's real cold you might want to push it all the way over that is in my case all the way over so if you look up in here you want to see what is all working that is the propane system that is the regulator that adds or reduces fuel uh, for the purpose of you know regulating the engine speed same way a carburetor works and its lines run over here and it feeds the intake of the air and just absent of gasoline of course it runs the engine so now i'm going to fill this thing up i'm going to take five gallons of gas and that stay bill is one ounce for every two and a half gallons don't think you're gonna by adding extra stay bill you're making it stay bill longer you're not it'll actually uh, cause a caking inside the top of your tank so don't go beyond the instructions on how many ounces to add per gallon all right all right we'll cut to that and there is a electric heater it will be used for the sole purpose of setting this generator up with its initial load all right guys be right back all right the generator is now full of gas i put in a little over five and a half gallons and just a little over two and two ounces of stay bill now, like most people, 90% of the people are not going to take and run this every day. They're going to buy one. They're going to test it out. They're going to fill it full of fuel. They're going to run it a little bit, and then they're going to park it. And even if they use it for an RV, it's not going to run all the time. So I recommend when you buy a generator, go ahead and get your stay bill or whatever fuel preservative you choose and fill your tank, put that in, and then you're good to go. Otherwise, you're going to be complaining in six months this expensive generator you bought doesn't run right. Now, propane, of course, as you saw before, or as you saw earlier, is hooked up. Um, the propane valve is on, on the uh, tank here. 
and uh, check for leaks by listening carefully. You can hear them if they're leaks. And in general, if you think you have a leak or you smell propane, go ahead and get you a small little paintbrush and some dish soap and wipe all the joints and everywhere on here. Look for bubbles. It'll make bubbles. If it leaks, it'll very low pressure. Now, all my other equipment is laying there to get ready for this. All my other items, including a multimeter, because I want to test this cord's outlets and everything on it uh, before I trust it to plug it into something. But we are ready to fire up. So after you've turned the battery on, you're going to go over here and make sure that your gas is on. So my gas is on. And you're going to turn power on to the generator. You might hear a mild click in there. That's, a, that's I believe, that was a solenoid or something. And then you're going to, it, since it's new, it might take a second to start. All right. Now, she's fired up. I'm going to take a look at the voltage it's putting out. See what the voltage is. It's 246 volts. Show zero hours of operation. 61.8, 61.9 hertz. That's actually a very good rich, rich voltage. All right, 246 volts. And this is a computer safe generator, so I don't know how well you can hear it. It's fairly loud. I would say it's uh, decibel rating is probably accurate. I'm going to cut this video while I hook up the cord and do a test on the voltage. All right, I've determined that the voltage is correct. And now we're going to, after it's been running now for about three minutes, we're going to turn on a heat load. Thing, barely noticed that. That's 1250 watts on low. I turned it on up to 1500 watts. You can't even notice this generator didn't even bog down. Now the 247 volts is the top reading, but this output of this generator on this cord is made for RVs and other things that run on 120 volts. You will need you a 240 volt cord for the sole purpose of 240 volts if you need that for your house. This is a run currently being done on gasoline. You can see the heater is under full load. And I'm gonna turn it off and you can, add, you can sound for yourself, listen to the sound yourself, determine if it even makes a load to put 1500 watts into this. Very little. All right, now the process for shutting one of these down is you wanna unplug your load. Technically, my load is unplugged because it's switched off. And then you want to take and shut off the gas and let it die on its own. When you're going to put these in storage, be sure to allow all gasoline to burn out of the engine by shutting the gas off while it's running, starving it of gasoline. All right, this is the gasoline startup. I'll do a propane startup very short to add to this, and hopefully that helps you guys out when you're figuring out what to buy, all right? Shut the engine off after doing that test. I hope you can hear what I was saying. We ran a 1,500-watt load on this generator for a few minutes. Time lapse, it was about seven minutes, and I showed a test to where the outlets on this line that they provide with the generator, in this case, they might not provide it with every one of them, show that the outlets are 120 volt, both uh, both sides, and you will need a 240 volt cable. 
if you so decide to use that 240 cable. On this side over here is an L530. This side over here is an L1430, 30 amp. Now this one is made for your typical RV hookup right here. So it's 30 amps straight out of that at 120 volts. This one has a 120, 240 option. So I'll disconnect this and show you that if it didn't have this one over here, it would be 120, okay? So when it's adding this leg to it, it adds the double legs to it. And add this, put this back on. And uh, turn, give it a little twist, lock it. And of course you have your standard 20 amp outlets and you see that little slice in your plug right there. Same as these down here. You see that little dash that's on the side of the plug. That, that's showing you that it's a 20 amp, not a 15 amp duplex outlet. So same thing with these and they have resets on them. So these are 20 amp also. And of course you can reset your two 20 amps and reset your two 30 amps that are right here. All right, which is kind of, this already has the GFCI, ground fault interrupted circuit. And it adds that in addition, strange enough. Now we're back over here, we're on propane. Let's go ahead and move it over on propane and do not use channel locks, pliers, wrenches, uh, you know, super granny's hands or whatever on this. It just takes you to make this make up. There is a spring in here that'll put the pressure against the seal and seal. After you've hooked up over here, do not use pipe dope and other type of wraps and materials on it. No Teflon. It's supposed to be a standard metal to metal fitting. Put that together. Just put a little light wrench uh, on it. Crack your uh, propane, check and le check for leaks and everything on it. Now, we're over here on propane. I've switched that over. I'm going to turn this straight up, which is for propane, see? That's for propane. Now, you can't move that back to go to gasoline. Now that we're back over on that, I'm gonna turn power back onto the battery. Remember, it always will turn these off when you're not using it. Power back on to the generator. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a choke there. And make sure my gas is on over there. there. All right. So now she started up on propane. And she's running off of that tank right there. And she actually sounds a little quieter. Voltage is the same at 240, 246 there. And now we're going to turn on this heat load. I will start first with 1,250 watts. And hit the power on it. Bog down, just barely bog down at 1250. And now I'll run her up to 1500. That's only another 250. Didn't seem to make a difference. Okay. Now this generator will run on this out here, solely on propane, as you can see, right there on propane. And she is running off of propane that's about probably 10 years old in that bottle. Runs good. All right, this has been my champion. Dual fuel, 9,000 watt, setting it up and getting it ready. I'm going to be putting a spot right over there next to the house where there's outlet inside or a, uh, a power box on the other side of the wall. And this champion is going in with a generator switch and we'll be done with it.